And Aaron, how do we know? I think we're live, Aaron. You think? We always have to think on YouTube because there's a delay over here. So I don't know, but I'm going to take your word for it. Oh, how are you doing yes. today, David? Really good, Aaron. What about yourself? I'm doing good. I'm still like usual, just trying. Got a little bit new setup here. So uh, every episode we have a little bit new setup and a little couple new things to figure out. But other than that, it's great. How are you doing? Yeah, really good, actually. Uh, just chilling, relaxing, saying hi to Panda, who's here. He's in the building. So I was just saying yeah. hi to him. <laughs> so looking forward to a bit of a nice chat today. It's going to be interesting, uh, something a little bit different today. I thought we'd uh, discuss what accessories we use and things like that. And then we're going to go back into a little bit of history, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Yes. So are you keeping yourself busy? Uh, yep. Uh, every day, always working on that jewelry photography 24-7. Uh, uh, it's really great, actually, because you sit in an air-conditioning place uh, and you don't have to run, a, you know, chase brides around or anything else. So it's actually pretty good. That also gives me the opportunity to do some... Uh, uh, photography for myself too which is kind of neat so yeah uh how about you you're still in lockdown or what uh no i'm out um today well i went out i got out on friday again but but <laughs> you're gonna laugh but kerry now is in lockdown for 14 days because someone in her workplace tested positive <gasps> Oh. And um, but she got tested. We both had to get tested uh, on. Um, I think we went Saturday morning, but we were both fine, so we hadn't got it. So I'm okay to go out now, but Kerry has to be out of work for a week, another week longer, oh and then my. she goes back to work next week. <laughs> so that's crazy. So out of all of that scare, you you actually well, we always talk about there's only like ten people or so that has it there on <laughs> in your country, and then. It gets like that close to you. Wow. Yeah. It's spread a bit now, though, but we're officially, I think our vaccination rates now are up to uh, over nearly 70% of the whole oh. population, and it's 80% in another week or so after that. So they're opening oh, wow. up basically fully after that. So we haven't got much longer to go. That's super cool. So Mario's so, here as well? I don't see nobody. Oh, they should, they're in the chat. They're coming up. Um, hmm. Jeffrey there as well. How come I wonder why you're not seeing it? G'day from Brisbane, I David. See Panda. And oh, unless it's just coming through slower to you or something. That's weird. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, so now not... on our on that app that we're using to talk to each other, I have like a a little uh, bub. Oh, I'm getting I'm getting their chat within our little program of the eCam. Yeah, it comes out a little program on the uh, yeah like that. It's a little. Guys, we just oh, we're yeah. still learning how to use this program. Yeah. So, uh, but can. I can't comment. <clears throat> oh, can't you? I can. It's no. got add comment down the bottom for me. Like if I just yeah. bear with us while we go, I'll just put hi, and then it should go in. No, yeah, I can't. So it came in. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe that's just for you. So I'll have to use the the um, the. You'd have to use a normal chat then, Aaron, through uh, yeah. YouTube. Yeah, and do it that okay, way. Okay, I see everybody popping chat. up. So, That's oh, yeah, weird. you're there now. Yep, I can see that. Okay, so, Jeffrey's also here. He's saying good day from Brisbane, um, David hey, Jeffrey. and Aaron. Um, Panda said, sup, my brother. Um, Hero said, I see and hear everything fine. Um, so, how's the quality? Cool. It's not 4K, but I am streaming out at 1440, I think. Uh, so, it is a little bit higher. So, let us know what the quality looks like hey, of the stream. Uh, hopefully and the sound. I've got a good. fan running. And see if you guys uh, can hear the, the, the sound of the fan. Um, if it's annoying, then I shut it off. Let us know. Yeah, well, I certainly can't hear it, Aaron, so I think it's it's pretty good. So I don't think we've cool. got an Must issue there. Must be sound, sound cancelling stuff. Now, we did pretty well last week uh, with views. We actually got over 1,000 views, so I'm really happy with that um, from oh. our first show back. So. That interesting is cool. to see how it grows uh, over the time. Like we're expecting, most people are still getting used to the fact that we're sort of back weekly now. So, you know, it's going to take <laughs> yeah. a while before people realize that we are back weekly now. Um, but we've got some interesting topics to discuss in the, you know, the coming weeks. So stay tuned uh, for that as well. Well, what I thought we'll do, because I don't want to, we want to make this an hour maximum. Um, so we're just going to basically go and talk about the first thing today, which is going to be what accessories do you think is a must oh. that you take? Now, I'm going to have something totally different to Aaron because I'm a fusion. Um, I do fusion all the time now, which is video and stills at the same time. So I thought we'll start off with Aaron 
Uh, if you've got any accessories that you want to share, Aaron, and show us uh, what you'd like to sort of take in each shoot, let me just quit the chat for a minute and I'll pop over to you. So I'll be show quick because I don't got. have much. Well, that doesn't matter. <laughs> I expected that from you because you are minimalistic. I'm a minimalist. I don't have much, but there are things that, you know, w when you need it, you need it. Uh, besides memory cards and, 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 and batteries and stuff like that, just the, uh, of course, you know, you have to have a bag, peak design. So I don't know if that's necessarily an accessory, but this is a must have for me on yep. almost every photograph thing I do. Now, Aaron, uh, the, do you the next use, thing, but is that the bag you use all the time or do you go for a larger bag sometimes or is that it now? No. This is actually the larger one of the two that I have. This is a 10 liter peak design, uh, everyday carry, everyday sling, whatever they call it. And then they have the smaller one. Well, they have a bunch now with their new lineup, but the sm I still like the older ones better. And then they have a smaller one with the five liter. And that's the one I carry when I'm really minimalized. But this actually fits pretty good just because uh, if I want to put my phone in here, if I want to carry a water bottle or if we buy something while we're walking around. Uh, I can bring a flash in here with three small lenses. It just gives me the option to carry just a little bit more. And also, it will actually hold my um, my iPad, my big iPad, this thing here, without a case. This is the iPad Pro. Without this case on it, it actually slides in the back here, which is actually amazing. So I, I tend to start carrying this more than the smaller one now, just because if I got something, I could throw it in there. The smaller one, it's pretty much what I have is what I have, and I can't really put anything else in it. So, and, the peak and are you carrying? Is a must -have. But I noticed too, is that a peak design attachment on the side of that one? Yeah, this is one of my must haves. This is the peak design capture clip. I keep it on here just because I don't typically, you know, wear this all the time on my every day. And I take a camera with me like everywhere I go. It's like I, I never leave home without a camera. Uh, I also transport my camera to the studio where I do jewelry photography. But no matter where I'm going, I always have a camera. It's always in here. And I have this just in case uh, right here so I never forget it at home. Now, I don't typically put my camera on here when I'm using this. I typically take this off and put it on my belt. And uh, I'll show you my next must have, but they all work in sequence where I have the camera in here when I'm eating. It's on the back of a chair or, you know, of course, you don't want to make sure someone doesn't steal it. And I make sure I'm in a position where I just don't leave it there because someone steal it. Have it on, you know, anywhere around me on another chair or whatever, and the camera doesn't get knocked around and all that stuff. When it's not in the bag and I'm walking around, I hold it in my hand because I hate straps, which I'm going to show you what I use. But then that capture clip is on my belt. So if my hands are full, if I want to fix a flash, if I'm using flash, or if I just want to hold a nice cream cone or some bags because we buy something, instead of putting it in the bag, I like it out so that I can grab it and take photos real quick. And that's where that capture clip comes in handy. It's oh, okay. on my belt and the camera's out ready to go because I don't use straps. So, next straps. So my next thing here, now I'm filming with this, the Sony a7C, so I can't show you the strap that I use, but I'm gonna show you right here. Uh, I'm gonna try to do a, sh a share my screen thing here. Tell me if that comes up, David. Uh, yep, let me I think you're gonna have it. to switch it. Uh, do I do it? I think I do it here. Yep. Oh, hang on. I should be able to do that without us being in there. Uh, let me just quit back. May, uh, I can go. Second. Let me just go large. Now you can show it. Oh, okay. Let me try that and see. I just filled. Yep, my whole that's it. Up. That's perfect. Yep. <laughs> okay. So that right there is a spider. Um, I can't remember the name of it. I'm gonna. Yeah, I link. love those. Oh, let me tell you. This is like my most must have. Uh, I want to transition into this. That's my mo most must-have uh, item because I did a, you know what, uh, wh when I'm done talking here, I'm going to post my review of this in the live chat so you guys can click on it and save it for later or whatever and check it out. Don't watch it now while we're live, please, but you can check it out later. But that thing is amazing because neck straps are horrible for me because one thing good about a neck strap is it's always there. So you're walking down New York City as a panda knows very well. He so I'm in New York for a while and you see something, you just pick it up and take a photo and you put it back on your neck. However, I do a lot of uh, like low shots and high shots and I'm just running around getting shots and I always have to take the strap off to get low shots and then the, the neck strap is dangling in the water and the puddles or the mud. Then I got to put it back on. Also, if I want to do high shots, I got to take it off again. 
do high shots. That's why I love flippy screens. But then the strap goes in front of the lens or it goes in front of the EVF, uh, making the auto feature go from the EVF, uh, from the back of the screen to the EVF. Neck straps for me are just horrible, so I just don't even use them. Uh, so I use these uh, spider uh, hand straps, and that's cool because you can walk around and just have it uh, lightly dangling from your, your fingertips and your wrist, and I'm not like hanging it from there, relying on it. It's just I don't have to grip the camera really tight, and it's always ready to go. So when I see something, ooh, I can just start photographing and not have to worry about a strap. It stops I you use dropping during too. Yeah, dropping, and that's the reason why I got it. We were on a cruise ship once, and I was hanging over – the bow of the boat getting a shot. We were in Russia and it was this really cool shot that I wanted to get. And as I was, I think I explained this in the, in my review video, but as I was, um, you know, getting the shot like this, my elbow hit the divider between our balcony and the other per person's balcony. And I fumbled the camera real quick. And this was the Sony a7 III, I believe. And I fumbled the camera in my heart, almost like I said, I said, I got to get something. I don't like neck straps. What can I get? Spider, uh, strap is the thing i got so you don't you can't drop the camera as easy uh you don't have to grip it as tight so i can do street photography all day long or any of my photography whether it's uh fashion shoots or weddings i always use it it's just really cool so that is what it looks like and just to let you guys know i took a photo of that uh and this is in house stat is where i took a photo of that right there so anyways uh yeah, let me it's beautiful. share ah thank you uh stop sharing Okay, so we should be good. Yep, we're back I'm to you. I'm not sharing no more. <clears throat> so that, along with the capture clip and along with the Peak Design bag, works together for me on how I transport and use my gear. And you should always never just rely on a bag because if your camera's in the bag and something happens, you know, the camera's in the bag. When it's on a capture clip or better in your hand or hanging from your neck, you can get shots. The next thing is a must-have. I don't know if this is an accessory or not, but it's a flash. I mean, this is probably a, a really important thing. I don't know if it's considered an accessory, but yeah, it is. a flash, I, I thought I would throw that out there because you could have any camera, even a micro four thirds, be in really low light and you can light up your whole scene and still stay around that, you know, 100 or whatever ISO. And even with a small censored camera, get really, really good images. And I did a video on that before about you don't have to have a full frame. If you're using flash, uh, you can make it look really good. Uh, real quick here, let me see if this works smoothly. I'm going to copy that and I'm gonna paste my review. Let's see if this works. So that's the review I just pasted in our live chat of the yeah, hand strap. There. Okay, so next thing is tripod. Oops, a must have accessory for me is a tripod. It's gotta be small and lightweight. When I do video, I use much larger tripods because I don't want nothing wobbling or shaking on it. Like I've got a couple of them, but this is a must have. I use this all the time when I travel, um, you know, getting, you know, low light shots. You can use this if you're trying to get trails and all that other type of stuff. Uh, uh, Panda, I saw some of his really cool trails. I'm sure he's using a tripod and must have. And it's got to be light because I'm a minimalist. And because I use this bag, it goes on the bottom, which the five liter doesn't work and it doesn't hang off so you don't bump into people so it kind of all works in my little ecosystem of must-haves the next thing is we're almost done here is a light stand because if you have a flash i don't oh i can't always bounce so i use a light stand and i love the colors on small that. yeah it's really good i think i did a review on this as well yeah. i'll post that in this later uh when david's talking and it's carbon fiber it's super lightweight and this does hang off a little bit from the bottom here but if you put it in the middle it's not too bad and you can always take this head off uh you know it just screws off like this and put that in oops i've got to go more i'm left i'm not left-handed and then it makes it a little shorter that can go in your bag mm -hmm. uh so Flash, got to have a flash stand, got to have a tripod. And the next thing that goes with flash, which I use bare bulb a lot of the times, depending on the situation, but I do like to carry just a little umbrella. These are super cheap. Uh, David has some that collapse and so do I. Uh, somewhere back there, I just couldn't find it where it's like half the size and it literally fits in one of these pockets straight down there. So that would be my light modifier of, my light modifier of choice for quick type of photography, uh, and then we can go on of other things. But I think that's it, David. That's my most must or my must have accessories for my kit. Cool. Okay. 
Thank you so much, Long Rider, for the five dollar donation too. Thanks. Hey, so much. thanks, buddy. Now I'll probably have way more than you, but I'm, I think I'm actually yeah, going yeah. to uh, do a um, video about a lot of the other gear I use because um, you know cool. I do have so much that I like to take. But I thought I'd just show you some stuff that I'll have now. Obviously, I would take the same as what Aaron just showed you, but I thought I'd grab some different things to show you. Um, first thing I like is, well, it's a holder that is for your cards. And I like this one particularly because it's um, solid. Now, this was for, it's from PGY Tech. Uh, let me just see if I can bring it up. Let's see if I can get it there. So it's PGY Tech. Now, I have two different versions of these. I do have a Think Tank one. Uh, and I like this too because it's got my business card there as well. Um, this will hold a lot more. Uh, as well um, so I usually take both of these though this one I love because it's protected so no matter how much it's sort of knocked or whatever it will be protected which is terrific uh, this one I just also keep in my bag with extra cards as well uh, if I use that now the next thing I'll show you is these little tools that I love the first one I'll show you is um, the Leatherman I use I take this to everything and brides have adored me when I bring this out and I can do different things like you know bring out the scissors and bring out little screwdrivers uh, occasionally I'll use you know the knives and stuff as well but I mostly use it for things like the scissors or the screwdriver the scissors are terrific um, you know and I've been able to use these to uh, cut little bits uh, that there is getting in the way on the dress or something like that and um, you know things like that so I'll use that uh, all the time so I always take this with me and it's been a lifesaver the other one is a small rig one now this I don't think you can buy this but you can buy a similar one this was sent as a gift for the 10 years but it's the same thing as the other ones they've got and it's this little device here but what this is and I love this so much because it has allen keys and everything built into this um, let me just show you. So I use a lot of Allen keys on particularly the gimbals that I use and also for connecting uh, the little uh, Arca Swiss plates on the bottom. So I use this all the time uh, and it's a great tool to just have in your bag. So that's another thing that I uh, use. Next thing I thought I'd show you is I always carry around uh, this little microphone. The great part about this is I don't need to worry about um, having batteries in this. So I can just throw this onto the camera anytime and grab ambience. This is the Sony one. Uh, I also have you know a cheaper version as well. I did forget to grab also my Rode Wireless Go 2s because I always take those with me as well uh, for recording uh, video. Uh, another thing I carry around is this little bag now this is a filter mist i think this was a th oh, it's mind shift actually um this has all of my nd filters inside um so i carry this around uh, for shooting nd now i've changed the way that i uh, shoot a lot aaron when i'm doing um stills because what i'm doing i don't use high speed sync anymore I i'm intending to go now to using filters and then it right. saves the power on the flash so i'm yes. using now nds for my still shots so then i've got far more power out of the smaller strobes that i use uh, you know the 250 watt um pro photo and stuff gives me much more power to overpower the sun because i'm using yeah. nds and i do use them in video uh, often as well so that's another thing i lug around you're gonna laugh but video i know you hate using monitors but video um, yeah I always take this around. Now, remember when we're shooting video and stills, we usually have someone that carries all this gear around. So um, I have got uh, the latest Ninja. Um, I got this uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, this is the Ninja V Plus. So this oh, will nice. let me um, stream 4K 120, I think, or 4K 60 into this. Uh, and the beauty is it's all pro uh ProRes, um, and you can even go ProRes RAW, which is fantastic. Mm. So if, if I want to make sure that the camera is not going to overheat, I do like doing this because basically once you plug this in, it gets rid of the time limits. Um, I had problems when I did a dance uh, video recently. or Well, actually, it wasn't recently because we've been in lockdown, but la late last year I did a, 
a video of uh, a dance um, concert and she wanted the whole thing recorded but I forgot that the older cameras, particularly like the A7 III, have a time limit and they shut off after 30 minutes. I did luckily have three cameras going so I could sort of cut them in but uh, they all turned off at different times but I forgot because I'm so used to using my A7 III now, it doesn't turn off. Um, the second you connect them to monitors like the you know the ninjas and stuff, it gets by that recording limit. Uh, the, the A7 III doesn't have that anymore so... Um, you know, it's it's interesting. I love Mark said David arrives with a container truck to weddings. Yeah, I do take a lot of gear, but I have to because I'm yeah. doing video and stills. And, and a lot of the stuff is audio that, like I said, I haven't even taken you through everything that mm -hmm. I use for audio at this stage. But that's just sort of what I carry around as a must. Look, if I'm just going out and doing a portrait shoot, I will just take a bare minimum. But I'm talking about what I take to general images because most of the time, remember, if I'm doing portraits, I'm also going to be shooting video as well. So I do carry around a lot more than, you know, what the average photographer would sort of carry around. But, yeah, so that's basically it. I, I had two honorable mentions. One is a reflector. I take that everywhere. Oh, yes. You know? I know. See, you know, I started thinking, like, there's got to be something else. But I, I don't take that on my travels, just when I'm doing, like, uh, anything else here. But if I travel, I never take it. But it's one of those... Um, those real big ones that fold out, you know, yeah. you could take it off and use it as a diffuser. I actually use it as a diffuser probably more than to reflect light back into someone if the sun's on them or whatever like that. The other honorable mention is you uh, brought up this and I had it in my Peak Design bag and that's an ND filter. This is a two-stop ND filter uh, because on a Sony a7C, it's almost, it, it's not an absolute must have, but it only has a shutter, uh, sync, uh, a shutter speed of four thousand not eight thousand so if you're shooting with the fast lens and you put this on it just allows you to um you know expose a little more yeah. i don't use it much but in certain situations i might have to put it on because of the four thousand four thousandth shutter speed um but i did a video on how i get around that but i do have one of those that's about it yeah, like I said, I might do a video <clears throat> going through all the other gear because there's lots of other stuff that i take as well um so i might do that in a coming video in the you know in the next few days especially that audio stuff yeah because there's a lot of the audio things that i take around now so so that's it uh, let us know in the comments down below what you use i mean you can even let us know in the live chat if you think there's something that we've forgotten that you think is a necessary thing because we'll go through the live yeah. chat just at the end uh to sort of you know uh, close up um but what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the next story which is talking about um some classic lighting mistakes so let me just go over to the browser and this is it here now this is from petapixel um but i thought it might be let me move it over here for a minute uh, i thought it might be an interesting thing that we can discuss aaron and, and you can talk about yeah. this as well now i have to be like i said completely honest a lot of the time now i'm using natural light but you're still it's still basically the same principles if you're dealing with natural light particularly when you're dealing with catch lights um, yep. And I thought that we'd just now I'm not going to read it all out because you can come back and have a look at this uh, yourself I'll leave the link for this down below But what I wanted to go through was just some of the headings that they talk about now And you might want to elaborate on this too about how important catch lights are because if there is no catch lights in the eye And I'll just show you this before mm -hmm. Aaron brings it up the catch light is here that you're looking at there But the difference per se between what I'm showing here which has no catch lights in the eye and where it has catch lights in the eye, the image can look dead uh, without mm -hmm. it. So do you want to sort of um, discuss that, Aaron, and let us know what you think about catch lights? Sure. Yeah, I when especially when I was doing video, because I, I was doing video professionally first. When we did interviews or whatever for projects, one of the main things that I always had to do is get that twinkling in the eye because when you or the catch light, when you get that catch light in someone's eyes like he just showed, you know, if you don't, especially if you don't got a whole lot of light going into those eyes, it's just like just dark eyes. You can't really, you know, when you communicate with people, the eyes are the things that you, you look at when you communicate most of the time. And by having that little, you know, sparkle in that eye, you can see that there's eyes there and it just brings life to the photo. Uh, catch lights are really difficult to do when you're using natural light only because that, you know, like, like the light he's showing right there, let's say that was just a natural light source that, that was the room you were in and that's the lamp you had. 
you know, you can move the model around till you get catch lights, but it's awfully high. So you might want to even pose her looking up a little bit to get that catch light. So natural light that you can't move or, or um, what do you call it? Uh, oh, I forgetting my terms, but it's the light in the room that you can't change. I forget the terminology. Um, you're going to have to pose them in a certain way, but then that might mess up your background. So one really cool thing you can do to get catch light is use an on camera flash, even if it's just on camera and just get it in a way you can use these little white cards that pop up on those. And you're not necessarily, if, if the, if the natural light is good, but you don't have catch lights, you can always angle this just a little bit. You can even use your hand or whatever so you don't ruin the natural light, just so that that actually shines in their eye a little bit. Now, when it is on camera, you're going to have, you know, um, maybe unflattering catch lights. I'm not talking about lighting up or, or shadows. Just the catch lights are going to be in the middle of the eye, but sometimes that's good enough. Or if you have a flash trigger, which I almost always have, which I didn't show you guys in my must have things, but you can hold it up here just for catch lights. Now I'm talking about just catch lights, not lighting up the model. Uh, the other thing you can do is even if you have a flashlight, you can have someone hold a flashlight or their phone. Um, you could even turn your phone on and hold it up here. Remember, it's not to light your model, but just to get enough catch light in the eyes in a, in a better angle than straight on camera. Um, and get catch light because catch lights are very important. Now, when I'm out running around and me and my uh, wife are just doing uh, modeling photos just for our own travels or whatever, I don't worry too much about it. Now, you can always add that catch light in post if you are into that or just want to. Um, I mean, if you're going to edit the photo on anything, hey, might as well throw some catch lights in there. Um, but those are ways that I do it. And uh, catch lights are very important. Well, the interesting thing that the oh, Oh, what did I do there? Uh, oh, I don't know. I, yeah, the the interesting <laughs> thing here is that um, they're showing. Let me just go back to the browser. Uh, if you look here, this is what's happening. So the first one, this is the image, uh, the lighting that was used for this one here. So you can see that the lighting is very, very oh, high. Cool. But what's happened here is the face isn't pointed up. The camera is directly at the face, but yeah. the light is very high. And this is what Aaron was saying. So there's two ways of getting around it. You either point the uh, model up towards the light with her face, or you yeah. bring the lighting down. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what's happened here. So then the lighting will appear uh, into the eyes. And that's how you'll get the catch lights into the subject where you're dealing with here. And and I do think it is it is a massive difference uh, between, say, if oh, you're yeah. getting this and this, and in fact, I've made a mistake sometimes, and I've put in a false catch light to make the image look brighter because it just looks dead. Uh, yep. I mean, ideally, you get it right in the camera, but like I said, I have had to before to give that look that you're looking at here. Uh, I had to add a fake light in there, but now, I mean, I always make sure that I see the catch lights uh, in the image. Now, the next one that we're looking at is something called underlighting. And again, I'll leave this article down below but what they're showing here is the difference of having no underlighting now I don't mind this actually but it probably is a fraction dark underneath the chin area and I'll, I'll sort of explain this in a minute but uh, you've got nice shadows that are appearing but that, like I said there's the under chin area is really quite dark this is too light because they've gone too far uh, with the lighting and, and it's basically become a very very flat image and you've lost all of the shadows remember the ideal photo is that you have shadows and highlights create the dynamics in your image and that's something that you've got to uh, look at now uh, there is two catch lights here this gives you a clue about how they've uh, lit this now often if you're not sure how something's been lit I often do look at the eyes and you can tell how it's been done because you can see here this is a two light setup there's one underneath and there's one at the top, and you can see that by the catch lights that are used there. This is correctly exposed where they haven't overdone it. There's still shadows that are there, but those deep shadows are um, taken off underneath, but you can still see that there is some shadows underneath. So it's important to get this mix done correctly, and I'll show how this has been done. Like I said, you could tell by the catch lights in the eyes, they've got a light above, and then there's a light underneath. And this is usually the way that I will light up a subject uh, I'll have the light underneath and it's often this way too I'll have a beauty dish at the top and then I'd have uh, a, a similar uh, reflector down the bottom actually just a normal uh, soft box and it gives you that nicer lighting but you've just got to make sure that you get your ratios uh, correct 
you know, to get this sort of look. But, um, I mean, I actually don't mind this, but I do think it is it is a little bit, and it's a personal choice, but it's I do think it's a little bit dark underneath. But she has got nice contouring on her yeah. face. I mean, what do you think, Aaron? Do you think that the top one there yeah. is lit a little bit dark? Yeah. I, I love, no, I think it's fine. Um, now, what they're kind of showing, too, is like that middle image definitely is not balanced right because now you're getting up lighting, which looks horrible. Yeah. You can see the shadows are now going up her face and not down. So when you're doing lighting, you want to make sure it comes from a natural position that we're all used to, whether it's a, the sun, a ceiling lamp, a floor lamp, or whatever, where the shadows are usually going down. But they have that fill light from the bottom uh, way too high because it's creating up lighting. Well, it's like uh, a but I don't movie. even mind that. What was that? I said it's what they use in horror movies, isn't it? Up lighting. Yeah. Yeah, horror movies because it looks awkward and weird and and it makes your brain go like, oh, what's going on? And a little nervous type uh, feeling to the whole scene. So, yeah, that up lighting is too strong. But just like David said, you just balance it out right where you're just filling in a little bit of the shadow. But I like the top one too, Is but maybe make the... Uh, Catch lights a little more prominent in that top one. No, it's pretty good. Um, yeah, I, I like that actually. It's that it, it's become style at that point. And you might like up lighting style as well. Most people don't like it, uh, so just make sure you balance it out. And before we go, um, Terry was saying ambient light. And that's not the word I was looking for that I forgot. It's actually practical light. Practical light is when you get on a scene. Practical light is what light is like fixed in there. And sometimes practical light is even in the shot. So when you're doing natural light, uh, you might go to a hotel and they have practical lighting there, and that's how it's kind of hard to get the composition you want and have catch lights at the same time. You know, the the interesting thing though about this is I actually like I actually like the first one because I, I do think too. it looks quite striking. I mean, even though yeah, I like it. and this is a personal choice, but yeah. I prefer this. Uh, than the one that they were saying is the correct one. I mean, I think it probably should be somewhere in between the two, perhaps, to a light and a fraction under here. But but I love yep. that depth that, that that they're sort of showing here, and it looks very striking to me. But I like I like quite striking looking images like this, and it's it's like I said, it's a personal choice that you have to make. You know, this is not wrong. And, and I think yeah. this is not wrong. The middle one is wrong. It's kind of um, wrong, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you sort of have to make a you know a choice between the two. I think the other thing too is I think the looking at this too, the exposure seems to be a little bit strong at the top. I, I don't know. There's I, that's why I probably prefer you know this sort of shape here where it's got that nice contour that's showing on her face. But let us know what you think about that in the chat because I'm just curious. All right, the next one I'll pass this one over to Aaron. He can go through this one um What's subject to one? background separation so what they're talking here oh, yeah. is about and I'll, I'll just show you the two images so this is the one where there's well. uh no subject separation on the background as against uh the second image where um they're showing that the the subject is lit off the background i think they also no they didn't do a third one but did you want to take people through what's going on here aaron and what the problem is here yeah, sure. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. When you're taking a photo, like my wife has black hair and I do a lot of, well, a lot of Puerto Ricans have black hair here. So when I take photos of girls with black hair, I, you got to be really careful that the background's not in shadow or, or dark because then you, sometimes it looks like they're bald. When you look at the photo, it's like all you see is dark background and you don't see their hair because their hair is black. They don't have a hair light or they don't have the background lit. And if you're doing natural light, you literally have to just make sure that behind that dark haired model is something brighter than her hair. So it, you know, it shows up and that's what they're doing here is they're taking the flash, putting it on the model, but none of that light is spilling. They're using one light here. Yeah. They have a diagram. So that's cool. So they're lighting up the model, you know, good, but the background's dark. So you don't know where her hair, her head and the background starts. So I think they're probably showing you, I can't see it that it's they're also the, the light distance. probably. Yeah, well, what they've what done that? there too, Aaron, uh, looking at it, she's much closer to, she's a long way from the background here, and she's much closer to the yeah, background here. So because you don't want the shadow. Yeah. Yeah. So they want light to spill on the background because they're only using one light. So they're lighting up the model. They're spilling light on the background to get the separation so her hair doesn't get lost. At the same time, like David just uh, wisely noticed, brought her away from the background so you don't see the shadow on the background. So separating the model from the background by having it lit up somehow 
whether it's that one light or natural light, a brighter background or so forth. Yeah, and I probably, the, as soon as I look at this, I would have added a second light to lift the hair off the background if you wanted to keep the background very dark. The hair light, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's the solution to this. But they're just showing this as being a one light scenario one because light. she's a long way from the background. Obviously, the background becomes very, very black. There's no separation because mm -hmm. that light is not hitting that background. On here, the light's actually hitting the background because it's oh, yeah, much yeah. closer to it. Yeah, so it's, it's sort of showing that. Um, I get it. Now, this one here is, now what's it saying here? Uh, joined up shadows. Now, this is another interesting one as well, where they're talking about the shadows that are coming through the face. Does that bother you, Aaron? Or would you immediately try and eliminate the shadows that are showing from the nose? I would only do that if it's, if it's for, you know, if I'm getting hired to do a magazine and they want it to be as perfect as possible, uh, if it's a makeup artist or, or makeup that, you know, they're trying to sell, and people are going to see a close-up of it. Maybe I would, I would, maybe fix it. But more than likely, I, I'm probably not getting shadows on the face at all for that type of photography. Anyways, I'm usually doing a one-to-one -one ratio where both sides of the face are evenly lit, especially if yep. it's for a fashion or, or makeup or something. But so I really don't care. Um, I don't think most people would mind. That's that's not an unnatural look most of the time. But if you want to be absolutely you know, the perfect photographer uh, getting the shadow, then yeah, you probably would want to bleed the shadow into the next because it's going to look, it's going to be, well, you know, a bigger light source closer is going to automatically kind of soften up the shadow, if not bleeding it into another shadow kind of, you know, you don't see, you know, the shape of her nose of a shadow. So I don't mind too much. Whether this is too I why I always uh, say to the um, model, you know, look, look towards, towards the, the light. light. Yeah, yeah that, that eliminates that. It's a massive difference. If you look down, like I said, it doesn't really bother me that much, but if you if you look down, say, here, and compare it to the next one, you can see that this yeah. is much more flattering, um, yeah. that it's got rid of that harsh uh, shadow on the nose. Sometimes if I've done that, I will actually uh, retouch it yeah. out in Photoshop. I do too. And, yeah, yeah. Um, Come to think of it, I've done that a few times because it's just... Yeah. But like I said, it's either soft light or, or, or I balance the light already, so I don't do it a lot, but... I've have done that, and I have softened up that shadow in post before, so that's funny. Yeah, um, and they're just showing this how this is done, where uh, basically, you know, the light's coming in hard. I think on the second one, it's it's nice and uh, soft on the second one down here. Uh, poor... How are they softening it? Well, like how are they eliminating they it? This uh, is a very and... simplistic setup to illustrate the point, but the problem is far more apparent when you're using a very hard light source. Oh, okay, they've changed the light source, so one is a but hard light it source. Show. The next one is a soft yeah. light. Now you can pick it up. I think if you look at the shadow, the uh, one oh, doesn't really show it much in there. Actually, it doesn't seem to look much yeah, different. Yeah, it's, it's a mm. it's a computer program, so they probably just like clicked softer light or something yeah. and just uh, made a softer light. Uh, this sort of relates to what we were talking about with the other one, which is having a hair light, Aaron. So they're saying here poor hair light um, configuration. Now what they're doing here is they're showing here that. They have got a hair light lighting up the hair, but it's also spilling onto the face, and you're getting these uh, harsh shadows as against where you see here that it's just hit the hair itself. Um, I mm. love doing hair lighting. I, I think it's it really does make the hair look beautiful, but you've got to be careful that you don't lose the detail. So you've got to expose, you know, pretty accurately. But, you know, if you look at it, say... From this, I, if I'd done this by accident, I would be retouching these highlights yeah. out as well. Uh, I don't like shiny skin. Um, this is without the hair lighting at all, Aaron. So do you, use, do you like hair lighting? Yeah. Well, when I'm using natural light, naturally, no, I, I don't usually use it. But it's funny you ask because like right now, uh, I'm actually, I have a, 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 I have a strip light, one uh, LED, uh, you know, round like shop type light above me for my hair light. If I were to go over there and turn it off, you would see the background wouldn't have no light for one, and I wouldn't have a hair light. Even though it's subtle, it's there, and it makes a difference. And the funny thing is, with hair lights, you gotta be careful, like the highlights she's talking about. When I set up my new little studio here, um, the strip light was shining on the background, shining on my hair, but also if I were just tilt my head a little bit, it would shine on my nose and my I, my my nose would light up really bright. And that would be unflattering like they show with the hot spots on the, the model's face there. So how I remedied that is I hung a, a piece, it's 
I flagged it off basically with a piece of black foam core and it just hangs down. So now the light is um, hitting the foam core and I actually tied a piece of string to it because when you're lighting in, in front of the camera and you're not behind it, man, it's just really difficult. So I actually have a string tied to the foam core wrapped around my light over here and I just, I pulled on it and the flag starts moving like this until I see the light coming mm -hmm. across my head and then I just taped it off. So now when I lift my nose, my nose doesn't light up with the light. So backlighting is important, but you gotta make sure like it shows that you don't get no hot spots. And that's what I was, you know, preventing my nose with the flag. And I think Pierre was, um, I don't know if I pronounced that right. Pierre is new to the, the, the group on our uh, Facebook. So welcome to you. And he's asked me, what are your thoughts on backlighting? Hopefully that explained it. Maybe that's more hair light and not backlighting. And I don't know if we're gonna get into that in a minute. See, John also said, I mean, you might want to comment on this, Aaron. What are your thoughts on Rembrandt lighting? I love Rembrandt lighting. Uh, I'm a big fan of Rembrandt's portraits and the use of light and shadow with the dark background can be lovely. Yeah, it's it's all a style. And of course, pe some people like it, some people don't. I like it too. I think it looks very uh, moody. When And if you guys don't know what Rembrandt lighting is, it's, uh, I don't know if I can express this here, but you put a light in a certain position, uh, I don't know where that would be. I'm kind of backwards. Somewhere here where the light's coming across. Uh, I don't know where that would be on TV here. But the light would have just a little square triangle on the light. So I don't have a light to, I'm yeah. backwards. But I think it would be more like this to where it's lighting up the face, but only a, this side of the face would have a little triangle of light there. Yeah. And it looks neat because you're not, that 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 eye's not falling into darkness. So you're, you're being able to see both eyes, but yet still have the shadow moody look to your scene. So you're going to have to Google it to, to get a better representation of that. I don't use it too much, um, but I do like it when people do it. It looks really nice. Uh, let me just switch back to the browser. Now, th to show you what's happened here. Now, I like I said, I, I love doing this sort of key light. Now, even when I'm, I'm doing uh, stuff with one light outside, I'll often mm -hmm. look for a light that is coming from behind the model that can light mm -hmm. her hair up. And you'll see that with a lot of uh, reporters that you see on TV. They'll stand the reporter with yeah. some natural lighting that's come back and it will rim their hair away from the background. So you get this beautiful rim lighting that um, you see. And, and I often look at... I'm crazy like i'll go to a movie and I'll, even if i'm watching netflix or something and i'll try and analyze how they're doing the lighting and that I always and they'll that. always have hair lights and things like that on particularly well both male and females actually to separate them from yeah. the background you can always tell that <laughs> the hair lighting has been used but so i'll always look for natural hair lighting as well but to do this you can see the first shot they've only used two lights here and this is what you're looking at when they've done this mm -hmm. shot um the uh, one where you've seen it here, where they're using the uh, hair lights starting to come in, is they've now got two lights at the background. So you'll notice there's one for the side hair, and there's another one for the other side. So that's how they're getting the hair lit up here, and the hair lit up here. Now this, like I said, this is far more flattering because it adds depth to the image mm -hmm. as well. So they're still using that concept that we were talking about before, about lighting up from the top and also underneath to reduce the shadows around the chin, yep. but they're also doing double lighting uh, on the it's side as together. well. Yeah, and you can see that uh, happening there uh, as well. So that's how that's done. And, and then there's just a conclusion, but let me just switch back to us. Um, so you know, these things just need to be done through practice, and that's why I have those mannequins that I use in my uh, studio, because I, I love to be able to keep practicing lighting and they're fantastic if you can get a mannequin or something from somewhere uh, they're great yeah. because they're like photographing a human you don't but you don't have to ask someone to sit there for so long and it's quite boring for them but you get this right. exactly the same effects and i love I'm doing like honey that. yeah yeah come over um, here and sit here for an hour so that's what that is so that's that done and don't worry we'll come back to the chat but now this week we're going to do something a little bit um, special with I'll see if I can do mine next week if I can find something but what we're going to do is we're yeah. going to try well you can explain this Aaron because um, you're going to be doing this week's version of it okay so our show was called Be behind the photo because we always we haven't did it in a while but we're going to get back into it we'll show a photo uh, I'll show one photo of mine and I'll explain behind the photo how I got the photo, what I did, what I used, settings and stuff like that. And then David would show a photo of his and all that stuff. I said, 
how about we show our very first photo we've ever taken and what camera did we use to do that? Now, it's really hard to track down your very first photo, but I specifically, I'm going to show you it. I specifically remember um, this was in I, uh, 1993, and I actually wrote uh, dates on back of my photos, which was really cool. So 1993, I bought my first camera, and it was a, if can I, can I share, let me see if I can share this, David. Yep. Uh, I think I might have to go full screen. Can you can you see that? Yep, let me just bring it up. Yep. So that was my very first camera I ever bought. It was a Minolta uh, Dynax 300 SI. Uh, this is a Wikipedia type site. Uh, it, it was different names depending on if Ritz sold it, Ritz camera, or if it was in Japan or China on that. But in America, that was, that's what it was called. And that was my first camera. And that's actually the very first lens I had. And that's the lens and the camera that I took my very first photo, which I'm about to show you here. So uh, that's it. What, what does this say here? Of course, it's a film camera. They didn't have digital in 1993. Um, but it says here, uh, it was launched in 1995 uh, by Minolta, which of course Sony sold later. It was a lens mount Minolta AF, uh, 35 millimeter film, and you can see the speed of 25 to 5,000 ISO with auto DX. It had autofocus. It had uh, metering TTL. So, it, you know, pretty advanced at this point, lithium battery and so forth. So it wasn't like a film camera that didn't take batteries, but this was my very first camera. And let me get out of this and I'll show you the first photo I took with that. Can you see me? Yep. Okay. So I, I remember getting the camera and I remember uh, getting home and I had to work that day. So I was on the couch and I was taking everything out and I already, you know, I went to, it was a local, uh, photo store in Redlands, California. That's where I, I moved there when I was 14. I grew up and I remember getting the camera back. They got me all the parts that I needed, batteries and film and all that stuff. I, I wasn't, I didn't know nothing about photography and only what the guys there told me. So I got home and I put stuff together and I did take a few shots. Remember this was film. You don't know what it is. And I remember putting the batteries in and just taking a shot, whatever. I don't know where those photos are. They're probably all just completely blown out or black or a picture of my shoe or, or the carpet. <laughs> but the very next, that was like on a Friday or something, because I remember me and my mom would love to go down to Hollywood and check out, you know, Hollywood, California and all the cool things in Los Angeles. And I remember it was the very next day because I was sad that I had to go to work, got my new camera. But the very next day we went to California, um, Los Angeles. And as we were driving, um, I didn't even think about taking photos out of the window or whatever, but it was just when I saw Los Angeles, I go, oh, perfect time. Let me take a photo of Los Angeles. And remember, I didn't know anything what I was doing. Um, and I had auto mode and all that stuff going. So this was like in auto mode. And this is the very first shot uh, that was anything. Let's see if this will focus yeah. of Los Angeles. Yeah, oh, 1993. Yeah. Los Angeles, California. I rolled the window down and I took that shot. So um, the auto focus, the auto features of the camera was actually pretty good because everything's exposed uh, and in focus, and the shutter speed was good, and um, nothing was blurry or you know motion blur. So that was my very first shot ever that was recorded. Now, like I said, I took various shots. They were probably just all blown out, and I probably threw them out after I got the film developed. And as you can see, this is film. <laughs> it wasn't digital, and that was it, guys. So. Uh, next week, David's going to share his and his little story and what camera he uh, did to take his very first shot uh, and his uh, his journey off of <laughs> going to his photography journey. Cool. That's, That's good story. Not, not very good, but hey, you know. All right. So let's just open up quickly to Q&A, um, see if anyone has any questions that they wanted to us to answer. So I'm just going to come down. Um, George said, can we get, oh, I forgot to show something, Aaron. Uh, one of my, uh, things that we're showing, I, I did a video review yesterday. Oh yeah, that too. Let me show oh, it because this God. is so cool. Because George failing. said, where did he put it? Oh, that's true. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, love David's review of the Nightcore camera cleaning kit. Oh, this thing is awesome. Yeah. Now, hopefully hey, I'm going to get, uh, uh, Nightcore did contact me and they were saying they might be going to send me or three of them that I can give away as gifts. But um, I usually use this rocket blower or rocket blaster. This is what I always do to clean up my cameras. But me too. this thing was Must sent have. to me uh, by Nightcore. It's not released yet, I don't think, or it's just about to be released. Uh, but it's a, it's a battery run one that you just press in. And I'll just put it. But 
it goes. It's about well, seventy kilometers an hour wind. It's like I haven't got hair that you can see move. But if I did show it in the review yesterday, but it comes. Well, you get it with these little extra things, which are brushes that attach onto it. And this is the really cool part about this, is that these attach on here. Now, I'm always doing beach shoots in summer here, but I always hate it because when I get off the beach, uh, there's always sand and stuff on my cameras. Well, this is like the best thing ever that I reckon I'm going to be able to use because if hmm. all I need to do is just um, turn it on and then you just brush around the thing and it'll blow the sand off as you're brushing like this thing is awesome now there's a separate little uh device oh this has got it this has a sensor cleaning um filter on it now that it's such a fine filter inside these that no bad stuff can get in through the the actual camera but if you take the lens off and then you can literally because i forgot to show this when i was showing what, what i carry uh then you can literally uh use it inside and blow out the stuff now i don't really i'm not that keen on putting it inside with the brush i i really just would take that off and then blow just like this upside down and clean it out but um that now i'm going to carry that around i've had it now for probably around about three to four weeks and i've been using it all the time and i absolutely love it um so if you want to check the review have a look at the previous video that i put on uh below because this thing is I don't even know how much it is actually because they didn't have pricing, but they might be there now in the link that I've uh, sent. But um, brilliant. But stay tuned because I might have three to give away to viewers. So uh, we'll see if that well, uh, happens. I think that thing blows. Yeah, it does blow. Yeah, get it? <laughs> it's so cool. I love it. Uh, it uh, is Brett's... cool. I saw, I saw you post that video and I watched halfway through and had to go to work. So uh, yeah, that's interesting. Now, does it blow? Would it blow harder than the. Um... Oh, the yeah. rocket blowers? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's uh, really quite strong, Aaron. Yeah. It's, um, like I said, it's it's about 75, 70, 75 kilometers an hour. It's pretty good. Wow. Um, I cool. showed it blowing one of the models here. It was uh, moving the hair, and you could sort of see how I didn't get it was to that. Moving. I'm going to check yeah. it out. And how, how does it charge? Uh, it's just USB-C. Mm. So you just charge it through USB-C through here and you get about 90, um, you know, what they say, 90 um, blows or something out of it or whatever. Uh, I love Mark too. He said all he takes is the 12 inches behind his camera uh, when he said that's all <laughs> he's taking. Um, George said everyone uh, should catch Aaron's YouTube series on creating zines. Yes, he has some good videos up there now about creating these zines. So if you want to know what they are, check it out because he's uh, really moving with that and it's some pretty cool stuff um george said love that nightcore review aaron was sharing his um video reviews there so you can click onto those if you wanted to check uh good day all uh, likes i'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it i think it is um what else i love this david arrives with a container truck to weddings yep um what, what was that? ambient david well when we were talking about gear um, Mark said that I arrive with a container truck um, to oh, weddings yeah. with all the gear that I've I seen your around. video. I've seen your behind-the-scenes videos. Yeah, it's, uh, I do take a lot. Um, Panda said I would uh, do more to the lighting for the top side but slightly tint um, the light at the other end, I think he's saying. He was talking about that thing we were saying before. Bounce card will often do enough fill. Yep, a bounce card is good. Yeah. And Aaron showed that too with his little flash as well. Catch lights and stuff, yep. Um, now, Jeffrey said everyone to their own, and that's exactly right, Jeffrey, and I said that because uh, oh, we, yeah. that's when we were talking about those images and how everyone likes different things. And remember, it is art, yeah. so in the, in really... Do whatever you want. Yep. If you're happy with it, that's really all that should matter. Um, mm -hmm. Per said, I'm just a hobby photographer, but I love backlighted subjects. Um, what are your thoughts on backlighting? Well, Aaron went through all of that. Um, mm -hmm. Let me just check down here. Uh, Dan said, um, I'm not advanced enough to know a lot about lighting, but if you are going out to a model shoot in dapple lighting areas under trees and you can only take one light, what would it be? Well, do you want to answer that, Aaron? How do you well, handle I'll dapple probably... lighting? Yeah, I, I mean, I would probably use a reflector because I, I like natural light. I don't need batteries. I don't need... Uh 
anything else. You just hold a reflector. If you're by yourself and you can't have someone hold a reflector. Um, actually, I saw Ike. Is Ike's not in here today, but he does. Um, I've seen him doing a few shoots holding a reflector as he's taking the photographs uh, at the same time, which you can do. So I would use that. If not, just this is the only flash, like I showed earlier. If you just wanted some fill flash, uh, you could literally, if you're by yourself and you don't even have a light stand, you could put, you know, a shoot through umbrella and you can just hold the umbrella off to the side like this and do photos that way. Uh, you could do some filled light, but then maybe you want your photo to have dappled lighting because yeah. you can really make cool photos with dappled lighting as long as you're exposing for that light coming in uh, and you're not blowing out that dappled light. I think that could look cool. If you're not looking for dappled light, you can always uh, turn the model in a position where the, the dappled light's on her back and she's in shadow. So there's a lot of ways you could do it. How about you, David? What would you, well, how if, would you if, do it? If, if, if I didn't, didn't want, want, if I didn't want the dappled lighting, the, the simplest solution really is to use a shoot through um, reflector, you know, the, just the light ones where the light will come through, you hold it above the model and then that will yeah. uh, get rid of it all. Yeah. Even just that's like the this. same principle. Yep. So you yeah, just see, shoot it like that and it's gone. Look at my face. See, there's there's harsh light, and then you just hold this over the model if you have someone, and now it's it's diffusing those dappled lights. So that's a good one, David, because I would have done that too, and I've done it before, so good. Mark said, oh, Panda said Minolta, yep. Uh, Mark said the first photo he did was 1972. Um, oh, my gosh, you dated yourself. I wasn't even born yet. <laughs> Per said, my first camera was an X-Actor, is it? X-Actor, pain in the butt, but quite advanced. I had to use the Sunny 16 rule to shoot. Oh, jeez. Um, and that thing blows all night. Put it in reverse and it sucks. No, it doesn't have a reverse, unfortunately. Oh. Uh, aside from new body or lenses, is anyone running into, a, uh, into computer uh, equipment or accessory shortages due to worldwide supply issues? Yeah, it's hard to get everything. Uh, at the moment due to the chip shortage. Um, I have got, like I said, I did buy the new iPhone, so I was lucky enough to get that on day one, and I am getting a new Apple Watch um, Friday because I wanted the new bigger screen. So I got an uh, iPhone 6. Well, it's still a good... <laughs> you know what I'm, you know what I'm like, Aaron? I know all your new gadgets. But George, oh yes, God. it's uh, tough at the moment with supply issues. It's pretty tough out there. Um, Triple zero seven said Sony one point two fifty millimeter or the one point four. Well, if I had the money, I'd get the one point two, but that's me. What For me, I the Zeiss fifty five f one eight. Why? Because I don't need to make any. I don't need the background to be any blurrier than f one eight. Uh, with these new sensors, like on the Sony A seven C, they're so good in low light. I never find myself typically in a situation that I need more light than f one eight. If so, I do have a flash to help me out. Also, um, the Zeiss is small and light. And if you've seen my gear and my bag, uh, everything's got to fit in here. And I don't yeah. like big, heavy gear. Uh, so for me, I just wouldn't n n ever need such a big, heavy lens to give me more light or and stuff like that. So, yeah. I mean, if I had the money, I'd buy the, the 51.2. I'd love that lens. But, but I'm, happy with my, I'm happy with the 55. I love that lens. Mark said also constant lighting is also a good idea too, by the way. Yeah, and I use that a lot, constant lighting. So yes. there we go. All right, so that's basically an hour. That's what we're trying to stick the show down to now yes. uh, to keep it nice and uh, uh, short. <laughs> um, but apart from that, guys, we'll be back next week. Aaron, have you got – I noticed you – I think you put a video up yesterday, did you, or this morning? Yeah, I'm going to just uh, talk more about if you guys are into the art of photography and you're into printing and coming up with a story and, and using photos to drive that story and print out your own story book like this, it's called a zine, then check out my my stuff. I mean, I don't care if you subscribe or anything like that, but if it can help you out and get you interested in uh, the art of photography or printing out a zine, then check out my, uh, my YouTube channel. Yep, I've got stacks like coming it? up. Uh, I'm going to do the next one probably will be a live for me that I'm going to unbox some live small rig uh, gear. It's going to be for the iPhone and also for the Black Magic, uh, sorry, for the uh, GoPro um, and a few things like lights mm. and stuff. So I'm going to do an unboxing and a live talk about that with me unboxing it. So stay tuned for that. I might do that tomorrow or Monday. Um, apart from that, guys, we'll see you in this show next week, same time, same bat channel, um, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't remember. Same bat time, same bat channel? Yeah, I, I think know. that's no, what it was, wait. wasn't it? Mark will know. He's older than me. He'll know. Yeah. I love it. Uh, apart from that, everyone, thanks so much for the questions. Leave them down below because um, Aaron or myself always do uh, get to them yes. and we answer them. So if you have any questions, uh, you know, it'll be uh, fun. What, stay tuned. I'll see if I can find an early photo from me. I don't know if it'll be the first, but I'll find an early one next week. from me for next week too. Thanks so much, everyone, and we'll see you in the next show. Bye for thanks, now. Thanks, guys. Love that you're here. Bye-bye. Thanks. I'll just quit the uh, thing so it's finished. Aaron, did you get the a 74 yet? Did it come through? Uh, well, that's the big secret, right? <laughs> so yeah, are you, we're not on, right? No, we're not are on. Are you so. off right now? Yeah, I'm off. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah so. so I ended up ordering it, and, uh, you know, it's from a little secret. Are, are you sure we're off? I hope so, because I think we're off.